What is up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up VS Code debugging for a simple JavaScript project. Often developers will use console logs when trying to track down bugs, but often an interactive debugging environment can make this process much easier. I didn't realize the power of an interactive debugging environment myself until I started working on C-sharp projects in Visual Studio, which has really nice integration. We'll start off by quickly walking through the project, and then I'll show you two ways to configure VS Code to run the project in a debuggable way. So as you see here, uh, we have a VS Code debugging repo, and I'll share the link to this GitHub repo in the video description. And in it, we have three projects. One is this JS project, which is a simple JavaScript project. TS project is a pretty simple TypeScript project. And Strapi project is an open source headless CMS, which uh, I hope to do videos on how to debug these projects in the future. But for now, we're just focusing on this JS project. So I'll go ahead and see into, cd into that directory. And you'll notice we have our package.json and our entry point. We have two startup commands. One is start and one is dev. Dev just has hot reload and they both start up the source index.js file. So if I hop over here, you'll see we have a pretty simple express web API on port 3000. We've got one base route, which just returns hello world. And then we have a function which sets up a few other endpoints, which are um, returning this array of users. And then the second one is returning a specific user from that array of users. And then down at the bottom here, we start up the Express API on port 3000. So that's quick intro to the project. And I will show you, I actually have a bug in this project. So if I run npm start, this project will start up. And if I hop over into Chrome, you'll see we can get our list of users. We can get our hello world. But if I try and get a specific user, like user one, we get a not found, even though we have a user with the ID of one in here. So what's the issue with our code? One way that developers would traditionally do this, or I should say JavaScript developers would traditionally do this in the browser, might be to add a console.log and say request.params.id. And if I save this, restart the project, this will log out this value that's coming in. We can make sure we're getting that properly. So if I remake this request, you'll see we have a one. If I change that, we'll see we have a two. So it's like, we are getting this ID. So why, is there something wrong with here? Or is it something wrong with our ID that's coming in? Like, it seems like we're getting our ID. What's the issue here? So I'll go ahead and remove this console log. And let's start this up in a debuggable way. So for the first example, we're just going to create a new terminal that will allow us to run a command to start up the project. Then it will run the project in a debuggable way. The second option is going to be to create a launch.json file, which is a feature that VS Code has that will make it easy for other developers to also quickly and easily replicate this debugging environment. So I'll show you the terminal way first, and then we'll show you the launch.json file. So if I click this JavaScript debug terminal, you'll see in addition to my bash instance, I also have a JavaScript debug terminal. Alternatively, I could come here and create a JavaScript debug terminal. So in here, again, I'll just CD into my JS project and I'll run npm start to start up the app and hopefully it stopped. Yep, cool. So we won't have a conflict on port 3000. And now you can see if I reload the browser, now the project started, it just spins and spins and spins because we have a breakpoint in here. So it's never reaching the sin, never returning data until we forward through it. Now we get our response, but let's actually see what the issue is. So we come in here, we can also add debugging breakpoints further on in this code, in this little Lambda function. And I can press F5 or F10 or F11 to continue through. So if I press F5, you'll see we get to this breakpoint. And at this point, we're looping through our array of users, we're getting our users ID, which is one, and the ID of the user we're wanting to get back, which is two, if I go again, you'll see now we have user.id is two, and request.params.id is two. And one thing you'll notice here is that u.id is actually a number, it's not wrapped in quotes there, request.params.id 
is a string of two, which because we're using the JavaScript triple equals, which does not coerce, this number two is not equal to string of two. So that is where our bug is. So I can stop this. And there are a few different ways to fix this. I could change it to a double equals. I could convert these to strings, or I could uh, convert this to a string or convert this to a number. I'll go ahead and convert this to a number because that's really what we wanna do here. So if I start this project back up, you'll see our debugger attached. And if I reload this page, we got our breakpoint again. And if I F5, oop, I actually need to add that breakpoint back there. So if I reload this page and F5, now you'll see u.id is one. And then here, this number is, well, it's converting this to a number. And if we forward through it, move these breakpoints, you'll see now we get our user with the ID of two or one or three or whichever user we want to get. So that's one way to set up this debugging environment in VS Code. So I'll go ahead and close out of this. The second way is to create a launch.json file. The first way is nice to quickly run through. It works, but another way, and I think this is more repeatable and especially it makes it a little bit easier for developers who aren't as familiar with VS Code or aren't as familiar with NPM. Uh, if we click this create a launch.json file and then select the environment that we wanna run in, it will create this launch.json file. And in this case, you can see the program that it's starting is actually JS project source users.js, which is not what we wanna start up. So I could either change this to index.js or I can just completely delete this file and I can make sure that I have my entry file open. So now you can see I have the index.js file. Previously, I had users.js. If I have this index.js open, create launch.json profile, select node. Now you can see it's starting up JS project source index.js. I've got some kind of IntelliSense error here or warning here. I'll go ahead and change that to node. I'm not sure if that's because of the version of VS Code I currently have. I did get a notification that I needed to update it recently. So if I save that, now you'll see in this run and debug tab, I have this launch program option and I can actually change that to launch JS program, save the file and it updates here immediately. So now if I want to debug the project, I can just go to run and debug, select the launch configuration I want to use, which in this case is the only one we have, which is launch JS program, select that and click play. And again, that will start up our project in debugging mode. I can come back over here to let's say add a breakpoint here this time or add one here as well. And you'll notice that we don't have an extra terminal open down here, but if I come to run and debug, I can view values here. And I actually can go to the debug console, which is where we can see output from this project that's running in debug mode. Now, if I come back here again, we'll notice spinning because we hit a breakpoint, hop back to VS code and we'll see this is the breakpoint that we hit. We could look through, you know, see the user that we got that had the idea of what we passed, or we could look at the request object. So we don't have to add a console log for each value that we want to look at. And it also doesn't get lost in the sea of logs or, you know, we forget what line number we wrote the log on, that kind of thing. We can directly hop in here, view values and walk through thing by thing. So again, we're still stopped. If I click play, it will spit out our result. And the same would go for the user's endpoint. So we hit a breakpoint, request.sendUsers. We can look at our list of users. We can look at the request object that came in, all that good stuff. So I hope that was helpful for you. Now this will work best if you have a pretty simple JavaScript project where your entry file is directly in your code. In the future, I'll be making videos for a TypeScript project because there's some configuration that can go wrong when you're setting up a TypeScript project or I should say some configuration that is needed when you're setting up a TypeScript project because it does compile to JavaScript and that type of thing. And then for the Strapi project, because this is an open source project, which uh, if we look at this package.json, it's not just, you know, starting up an entry point file here when you run these commands, it's calling an NPM library that calls the develop command. And it's a little bit more in depth to set up debugging for something like this.
but hopefully that helps you get set up with this JavaScript project. Once I have these videos created for Strapi project and TS project, I will link them down in the video description. If you like this video and found it helpful, please consider liking the video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down in the comment section below. And if you would like to see more videos like it in the future, please consider subscribing. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.